Natasha. Debbie. Show. The show. <laughs> Welcome to it. <laughs> Just two patriotic girls. Learning about the world. So please, don't take us the wrong way. Hello, welcome to the show. Now, if you haven't heard through the grapevine, the Natasha and Debbie show is coming to the United Kingdom next year. That's true. We might even do our own episode there. Like, oh, that'd be cool. That would be. Like, rent out a castle. <laughs> and I don't, that'd be weird. We wouldn't do a reaction video. Okay, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. We have no idea. Anyway, when we come, the place that we're going to learn about more today is definitely going to be on our list. Yeah, this is a place not getting axed off the list. We want to visit this place. We're excited as heck about this video today. And if you are too, because you've already read the title, you know what it is. Please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. So, what is today's video? We are going to take a look at Bletchley Park. Yes. Yes. A whole tour at Bletchley Park. Now, before we, we do that, if you didn't see it, it's been about two months now, mm -hmm. we did a whole video on Alan Turing, and it was incredibly moving, sad, and, and, and fascinating. Mm -hmm. It was a tough watch. We had some knowledge coming into learning about him, but we learned so much more, didn't we? We did. And we did know that uh, Alan Turing wasn't the only one that worked on the Enigma. And today's video is done by the same person that did the Beamish Open Air Museum. Yeah, that we just did last month. Oh my gosh, love that place. Also, not getting axed off our list of places to go in the UK. <laughs> so if you didn't check that video out, check that one out too. We love her, her videos she did there. This is our second one watching um, mm -hmm. today. Please go to her channel and subscribe. She makes some great videos, so go give her some love. Um, so yeah, that's today's video. Bletchley Park Tour, World War II Code Breaking, UK Days Out. So we get to finally see Bletchley Park because we're mm -hmm. going to be seeing it in person anyway. But yeah, we will be. It'll be nice to see a little but bit of what to we're going to get a glimpse. Yeah, Today. I think so. So grab a cuppa, favorite biscuit, or a, I don't know, maybe a, what? Um, a chip buddy? Yeah, there yeah, you go. You know, I don't know, <laughs> depending on what time of day it is. And uh, let's watch and take a look at the Bletchley Park tour together. Good morning. Today is our final day of our three day weekend away exploring some of England's stately homes. Today, Ooh. my mother and I are off to Bletchley Park home of the World War II code breaking. If you haven't watched the other videos from this mini series, we've done Blenheim Palace, we did Rest Park and Woburn Abbey. Make sure that you check those out and make those. sure that you subscribe just below as well. Yeah, and now okay. we're off to explore Bletchley Park. Yes. Oh, and by the way, Bletchley Park is not a stately home. There is a house <laughs> here, but it's not a stately right. home. It's much more than that. Okay, mm. thank you for correcting me there, mother. <laughs> This is the area to pay, so if you've prepaid, you can kind of cut the line off just oh, by Oh, I here. should have said, I, I can't remember what it is now. I think this video is a couple of years old. Okay. I think, so I don't know what if anything's changed. We haven't prepaid, so we are going to get our tickets just here. Like okay, so as you can oh. see here, Bletchley Park was the home of the code breaking during World War II, but it wasn't until the Freedom of Information Act, I think, um, in the 1970s that it actually was revealed what they'd been doing here. Obviously. So this was top secret <laughs> yeah. for the longest, longest time. Awesome. So let's go in and uh, see the introduction film. This is making me feel like I shouldn't be looking at it. I know. The world's first electronic computer. They are deciphering messages faster than ever before. This is the process that they would have to go through in order to be able to get the, well, co the whole code breaking process. So they'd have to actually intercept the radio signals. Okay. Then they have mm -hmm. to figure out how it's been encrypted, <coughs> then decipher it, which was mm -hmm. pretty much the hardest part, right. then translate it, because obviously it wasn't in English. Hmm. Then they need to cross-reference it and see if it matches anything else they already know, and then pass it on. So it was a, it was a big process. I bet. This is one of the Enigma machines that the Germans used. So the idea was that when they pressed a key on the keyboard, a system of rotors and wires changed it to a different letter. Yeah. So even people who were typing it didn't actually know what they were typing. That's crazy. Wow. Enigma enciphered a message in one of 159 million, million, million possible ways. Look at that. That's insane. Enigma, like she just said, enciphered a message in one of 159 million, million, million possible ways, changing every letter for another. Wow. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. 
Can we Definitely. just say for a second, can we just give Alan Turing another? I, again, I'm not leaving out the rest. I don't know mm -hmm. everyone else's names, but not just Alan Turing, but the entire team. Yes, the team that worked on God this. bless you. Mm -hmm. And hip, hip, hooray to Alan Turing. And again, the whole team. Don't want to leave anybody out because we're not, we don't mean to. And I don't know everybody else's names. But that's crazy right there. It's insane. I know. 159 million, million, million. I can't even comprehend that number. We've picked up a free audio guide so you can use your own headphones, but they have headphones there as well. Uh, <coughs> I've actually got a screen, it's it's too bright to see it, yeah. but there is a screen on there as well, so there's actually videos. Okay. We tend not to bother with these things, but we thought, well, it's free, why not? I love those things. So when you first arrived at Bletchley, you didn't know what you were coming here for, and they were made mm. to sign the Official Secrets Act because they were not able to talk right. about this to anybody. This is the code breakers wall, so it's specially reserved for veterans and their families or supporters of Bletchley Park. So these some of these names were actually oh. people who were here during the war. Heck That's yeah. so nice. And it goes all the way down there as well. Absolutely. We're Very assuming cool. that a lot of the ones that are showing us as me were the, if that's how you pronounce it, were here as, say, she was Lily Tilly. Right. Um, mm. That's a nice name, actually. Maybe and name. then got married after she left, so they yes. put the names as they were, when they were here. What an honour. Probably the most well-known name to come from Bletchley Park, Alan Turing. Mm -hmm. There's a shed here with the kind of bicycles. Did you notice it's a Turing family next to his? Right there, on the left. Oh, yeah, it does. Just saw that for a second. Hmm. Good catch. Yeah. Usually that's you that does that, not me. Turing. <laughs> There's a shed here with the kind oh, of wow, bicycles the that they would have been riding around wow, Bletchley Park neat. on. There are loads of different huts to go in and each hut has different exhibitions, but we're just having a wander around at the moment to get our bearings because it seems like it's a really big area. So we just want to make sure that we, we understand where we're going and we don't miss anything. So this is the house yeah. itself, wow. which is a very higgledy-piggledy looking building. It almost looks like like a few semi-detached houses put right. together, doesn't it? That's exactly what I was thinking. I'm gonna go into the mansion. There's was a couple it? of exhibitions in here, so we'll go have a look at these. In here is an exhibition on Bill Tut, Bill Tute, T-U-T-T-E, not sure how you pronounce it. And he cracked the Lorenz cipher, which was this cipher that was actually used to encrypt Hitler's own messages to wow. his German high command. This breakthrough was incredible, but this guy, he was modest, he never asked for any praise, he never asked for anything. He just left after the end of the war and just carried about his day. Nobody knew that he'd done this. Yeah. No one knew. Yeah. Well, I just have to pause because we said it in the Alan Turing video, I think we did anyway, or maybe we thought it after. Like she said, you know, no one knew, obviously, and for obvious reasons, mm -hmm. of course, can't give out top secret information, right. what these men and women did in my gosh, exactly. you know, that's so like, I mean, and this gentleman she's referring to, he was humble. Okay, but still, they deserve something. And I, I know you can't do anything mm -hmm. with top secret stuff, Yeah, but I mean, that's gotta be tough. Yeah, such a long time that they weren't allowed to even talk about no. being there. So. Right, so, I mean, that's and Alan Turing never got a chance to talk no, about it. No, he so. sure didn't. Anyway. Without him, the war would have continued a lot longer. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. incredible. You hear about Turing, but there were so many of these other people. Who yeah, were, and went good to yeah, know absolute geniuses. They saved so many lives by doing what they did. Mm -hmm. This is wow. the ballroom Beautiful. of the mansion house, which has a really ornate, impressive ceiling. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in yes, here is an does. exhibition on what the code breakers and the, everybody else here at Bletchley were doing in their spare time, because obviously they were allowed to have some spare time. And it shows what they were they were getting up to when Those they were busy talk. working hard. In general, staff work for three weeks straight, and then we're given the weekend off once a month. Hard workers. Yes. How do I look in this hat? Yeah? Does it suit me? Oh, this one's a bit big. <laughs> it's, in fact, it's, it's, it's huge. That's like every hat I put on. <laughs> oh, this is a bit better. I look like a chauffeur, I feel. But, you know, it's a bit better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Parker Medicare. from, exactly, Parker from uh, Thunderbirds. Hmm. Oh, I think this is the winner. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely mm. the winner. There were nearly 9,000 people working here at Bletchley in 1945, and they, a lot of them were actually living in Jeez. Bletchley itself. I'm not quite sure how nobody figured out what was going on. Yeah. 9,000 people is just so many people. To I didn't expect that number. In this local no. village. And for, for people to just be 
coming in and out of Bletchley Park, which was such a top secret place. And for nobody in the village to, I don't know, I don't know whether they just didn't query it or whether they mm -hmm. all sort of knew, I'm not really sure, but. Ah, but don't forget it was the war and everybody was aware that, what is it, careless? Careless talk, talk costs lives, yeah, isn't that so, the phrase? Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe. Huh. It was just a yeah. case of, we don't ask and no, we just, no. we know these are doing something good for the war, so we'll just keep shtum. Mm. Or did they have a whole, like, cover story, I'm guessing, for what they were doing. It had to have something. They couldn't just be gone all day, every day for years Maybe. going, oh yeah, I'm just in there doing nothing. nothing yeah, that, I mean, that's had to have a, a good cover question. Story. Let us know if you know. Hmm? This is a setup of the library during the war. This is really nicely set up. That's beautiful. It's as if they've all just got up and left their desks for the day. Yeah, it's kind of creepy in that way. It is. Just did a Very bit creepy of, uh, that code way. breaking. I uh, unscrambled these letters to make these phrases with the clues from this over here and the help of my uh, and the help of my mother as well in 1939 there were fewer than 200 staff here and that had grown to almost wow. 9000 by early 1945 so it wasn't just the code breakers that were here there were civilians and service personnel okay. of all ranks and all different types of roles as well here's a little bit about just some of them here so there's information on them you can Turn them around as the photograph of them. It's nice to see their names and, and faces. Yes, it is. Little quotes from them. God bless you, people. God bless you. This is a lovely, bright, airy room. I wouldn't mind having my office in here. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. pretty. Really nice. It is. Gorgeous. You probably can't hear it, but in the background, there is recording uh there's a recording that's playing i think it's coming from like the trees and it's it's the sounds of people who were living and working here playing i think they're playing cricket so what the sounds like they're that's doing it sounds like yeah. you can hear the um, the ball the ball the going yeah. and they're all sort of shouting at each other but it, it's yeah. a recording designed to make it feel as if you're here when they were here it's, it's really nice to touch. We just decided to stop and look at what from the film, the imitation film, <coughs> which is the film about Alan Turing right. and a lot of his work here at Bletchley Park. Mm -hmm. See what it was, what parts of it were actually filmed here at Bletchley. Good question. There was one scene that was filmed here, Only and it was it. a scene that wasn't even set in Bletchley Park. If you've seen the film, it's the <laughs> scene where they're in the bar, which, as far as I'm aware, the bar is supposed to be off Bletchley Park That's itself. That's weird. So they didn't use the real Bletchley Park to film a huh. film about Bletchley Park. Bletchley Park, which seems <laughs> really strange to me. Seems I'm like I could be wrong, but that's what we found out from the internet. If you know otherwise, please leave a comment below to let me know, because I'm happy to be proved wrong mm -hmm. on this one. But having seen the film, I was just saying to my mother, wasn't I? It, it doesn't yes. look like... No, it doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like in the film, so yeah. it makes sense why it doesn't look like mm. it, it does in the film, because... Well, it isn't. It isn't what it was in the <laughs> film. <laughs> There's a one hour guided walking tour of Bletchley oh, available, cool. nice. um, but you have to pre book that at the visitor centre, and, and we weren't offered it, were we? They no, didn't we say anything to no. us about it. No. We probably wouldn't have done it anyway because we, we quite enjoy doing things at our own pace, doing a bit mm -hmm. of free flow. Would we but do it? It's worth noting that if you do want know. to do it, you have to book it when you're at the visitor centre. You can't just go and join one when you feel like it. Yeah. This is a nice view wow. over the lake that's at the that's heart nice. of the Bletchley Park sort of campus. And you can see some of the buildings just over there. I don't think those ones are actually open, the ones that are directly opposite, but we're going to go to the ones that are beyond the trees there and have a look through those huts. Going into Block B. There's an exhibition on Alan Turing himself just by here. So he actually took up residence at Bletchley Park on the very first day of the war in 1939. Wow. The first time. A copy of the Apology that the government issued uh, apologising for the way that Alan Turing was treated because yeah. he was convicted for gross indecency simply for being gay um, and then he decided to commit suicide because they put him through chemical castration. Uh -huh. It's hard to believe that somebody who had such a massive effect on the war and the history of computing in general would be treated so appallingly by yep. the British government. You know, just because of the fact that he was gay, he was treated like an absolute outcast. And it's, you know, the apology is nice, but it, it can never, ever undo the yeah. awful way that he was treated. Right on. And you know, to think what an amazing man he was to have saved that many lives. Yeah. And, and the influence he has over today. You know, he, he, can, he invented computers. It's, it's, it's shocking. This. I will say this because we had so many comments on the video we did on Alan Turing. Mm -hmm. So many oh, yeah. people were saying, you know, Apple's logo 
it's off topic because the hearing talking about that makes me too angry. Mm-hmm. So I can't. Um, Apple's logo was a nod to Alan. Unfortunately, guys, it, it wasn't. Um, <clears throat> I uh, had already known about Apple's logo prior right, to even Alan Turing, but then it went back and even did more research. But even Steve Jobs himself said he wished that were true. Mm-hmm. It was not. It was actually Isaac Newton um, who was the nod was to right. him with the, the bitten apple. Um, but it, had, it had unfortunately had nothing to do with Alan Turing. Sadly, it yeah. would have been cooler if it, it did. It would have been cool, but and, it wasn't. And like I said, Steve Jobs in hindsight wished that it had, mm-hmm. but it, it was not. So. This exhibition here actually explains how the Enigma, uh, well, how the Enigma machine worked and how the code was cracked. And oh, wow, okay. It's complicated. I would But say. this video here was actually really, really good. We kind of understood what was going on. This one here has a timeline of the events at Bletchley Park and also the events at Bletchley Park in the bigger context of the war itself. That would be great to read. To keep Bletchley completely secret, and as far as we're aware, it was the Germans never knew it existed. Um, no messages were actually intercepted here, so they were intercepted somewhere else. Oh, really? And then they would be brought here. When they were brought here, then they were all sort of divided between the different kinds of code breakers because there were obviously loads of different codes around at the time. Uh-huh. Um, so they were intercepted somewhere else and then brought here, and it was here then that they would work on breaking the codes in the messages. Okay. If you guys are liking this video, again, please go to um, the description of the video um, to the original link to this video, and please subscribe to her channel. She gives so much details. She that does. She I, does. You know, we've watched a lot of different videos of people going to different places, and they mm-hmm. just sometimes leave out a lot of stuff. And she is always given so much extra information she, and things that I really do appreciate, and shows a lot. So this yeah. place is monstrously big. Um, and I'm really impressed by it so far. And I, I mean, I, everything that she's including is amazing I know. so far. I'm sure she'll miss a, f- a few things and she oh, can't show every single thing, but right. man, this is great. I know. It really is. Yeah, there we are. So it says no intercept activities took place in Bletchley Park. Okay. So the vast aerial layout that was required would have given it away, which obviously defeated the whole purpose of it. Uh, so yeah. why stations were established all over Allied Command. So, you know, Germany mm-hmm. itself, just through Europe, through the Middle East, America, wherever that was needed. The intercepting was done in these Y stations, and then it was all taken back here to Bletchley. The RAF, Royal Navy, Army and Civilian Services each operated their own Y stations, but all intercepts ended up at Bletchley Park. Okay. We were just looking at um, an exhibit on the all the double agents, not all of them, but some of the double agents that were used during the war. And the hilarious thing is that Hitler was awarded iron crosses to these people who were actually double agents. And he had no idea these people must have been Incredible double agents. Yeah. This yeah. was one of the Lorenz machines. And okay. these messages, it translated messages between the German army field marshals and the generals at the front lines. Wow. It's huge. Incredible. That is one this is crazy all, piece of history. It's fascinating, but it's also difficult to get my head around. Like, how were people ever even understanding these things? Mm. It's Geniuses? Honestly, no, little Geniuses. We just decided to do the task of how to read a teleprinter, teleprinter code, and they've got these teleprinter yep. codes written on the floor, and what? you can use this cipher to try and translate them. But it's it's um nope. oh my mother's insisting that we continue on, right? Okay, oh I'm, my mother's on a roll. She thinks she's on a roll anyway. I don't know how well we're actually doing. That would be so hard. Uh huh. I think you could do it. It would take a while. I mean, I wouldn't a, even try. A different language, translating the language. I don't have patience for that kind of thing. <laughs> okay, we think we've done them. Although, actually, I won't show the, you the answers in case you want to do them yourself when you come <laughs> it was here. A lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. Good. We like that, don't yes. we, Ma? Yeah, we do. Another day, another dressing up moment in my life. Now I'm being, I'm like, I suppose I'm being a Wren, aren't I? W-R-N-S. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I could get the time. I think I look quite good, actually. I do yeah, like the, uh, the brass buttons. Thank you very much. Yes, Don't take yes. it so you can get a full, full look here. Yeah. Just in case you guys were worried, I'm about to kind of create a bit of a diversion. I love her. So. <laughs> I love her. I was actually worried for, her. and I love that she told. I love her, and we met her dad as well as her mom in the last video. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, she's great.
did make it out of the skirt just in case you guys were worried but my mother had to kind of create it for diversion so nobody knew <laughs> what kind of diversion? the struggle I had with getting out <laughs> this is an example hmm. room um, because the a lot of the people who actually lived at Bletchley Park would have lived just in the, the house of a local family so they would have just had all of their stuff in one room so it's just a, a nicely done example of what one of their rooms might have looked like is, that is the classic that is my grandmother's cabinet Oh. Yeah. What's in there? It's basically like a, a German officer's office. Okay. Huh. Let's have a look. Okay. Oh yeah. Lock the chain. Oh yeah. Like a a desk and everything in here. Oh, yeah. Nicely done. Yeah, really nicely done. You may have noticed from watching these videos that my mother and I will see a kind of hands-on thing to do, like the code breaking or the dressing up, and we'll do it. All but right. we always find. <coughs> that nobody else is doing it when we start doing it and the next minute everyone wants to do it everybody wants to do it it's really bizarre i don't know whether other people are embarrassed or they don't notice mm -hmm. that you can do these things but that's probably why nobody's doing it two minutes after we start doing it everybody like honestly about 10 people started doing the code breaking after we started doing it but, nobody but, was doing it but point of fact is nobody but us finished it it's true we were yeah. the only ones that had the brains and the determination to solve those codes. Yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good. Well, Using that brain power. Hello, the boss. So we are in hut eight, and this is where Alan Turing had his office. So this is a recreation of Whoa. Alan Turing's office. It's a fun kind of hands-on exhibit about possibility and chance. Oh wow. Yeah. So in Hut 8, it was in this actual hut that the code breakers managed to break the top secret German naval enigma cipher. Right here. So we are going into Hut number 6, which was where the German army and air force code breaking took place. Oh, thank you, Mother. <laughs> and this is like a military fortress in a yeah. way. I mean, it is kind of. Oh, this is a very dark room, isn't it? What the crap? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh. It didn't get you? Did you even see it? Uh, I saw it. That got me for a minute. My heart yep. kind of like, Oof. At oh, first it was like, oh, a little creepy person in the corner, but um, then I realized. I had a horror movie moment for a second. Like, <laughs> did I, I didn't know possibly I wanted to see it. You do see that, right? I do see okay. that, yes. Sorry. <laughs> oh, this is a very dark room, isn't it? Oh, look at her over there, trying to keep warm. So it wasn't just a single Enigma cipher or key. They all had to be broken individually because it was based on the actual German a Army, Navy and Air Force all using Enigma in a different way. Wow, wow. wow. Crazy. I didn't know that part. All of these rooms are recreated really nicely, aren't they? Really nicely. It really gives you a feel. Ooh, wow, my camera is not liking that. But it really gives you a, a good feel for what it was like in here. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, this is actually how I imagined the huts to be. This is sort of long, thin, slightly temporary looking huts with all these different rooms off them. We're going to go into hut 11A, which has an exhibition on the bomb breakthrough. And the bomb machine was the machine that was used for code breaking. Yep. It had to be set okay. and adjusted and it would be able to then break the code. This oh, place is monstrously big. This is a particular it. area. This is a model of the bomb machine itself. So it's not actually an early computer, it's just a machine that was used for running through different combinations of letters know. that could make up the enigma. I thought it was an early computer. Did, did anyone else? Was that just me? Uh, I mean, that's what we had heard. I thought, I thought so, it was. Yeah. Interesting to find it wasn't. But yeah, this place is so much bigger than I, I thought. I mean, it's huge. It's huge. But running through different combinations of letters okay. that could make up the Enigma cipher. There was something that took the bomb less than 12 minutes and it uses all those possible. Yeah. That's insane. For that Second time, it's bad. 76 possible Enigma rotor positions took less than 12 minutes for it to run through and find the correct one. Impressive. It's, ooh, it's actually going. Look at that. Wow. Oh, so you can see these ones are, the top ones are running really fast and then the lower ones are running more slowly. 
and then the ones down here are running more slowly again, going through all the different combinations. I know I just paused and I'm pausing again and I'm sorry, I'll make this quick, but you know, as an American, you know, allies to, to, to our British friends and, and family, um, that makes me proud as hell. Oh, definitely. So I can only imagine how the, the pride must be mm -hmm. pumping through your veins and your heart right now when you see that move in, what it's done, and what all the people that worked here did. Yes. And sacrifices, you know, having mm -hmm. to lie, essentially, cover up what they had to do. I mean, they had to do what they had to do. But that should make you so proud. And it, it makes us proud. It definitely makes me proud. I mean, to do the work and not be able to talk about it, right. not be able to claim, you know, the fame for it. Not that that's the reason that you're doing it. It's just amazing. I can't imagine... What would have happened with World War II for many different facets, mm -hmm. but also specifically right now, if this hadn't happened? Exactly. I don't want to imagine it. No. But wow. Wow. This was actually something I'd been wondering, how did it get its name? Good but question. it seems that they're not quite sure. It could have been from the tick ticking sound that it made, which you just hear, mm -hmm. it, it ticks. Um, uh, or it could have been a tribute to the Polish bomber. It has two meanings, an exclamation for something really good, or a round scoop of ice cream. Okay, let's name a machine after a scoop of ice cream. Why not? <laughs> Debbie would. We're now in Hut 11, which was one of the places that some of the first bombs were, and they were operated by the Wrens, so the Women's Royal Navy Service, WRNS, Wrens as they known. So they had to set up the wheels at the front of the machine, but also all of the wires that were at the back of the machine as well. And this is a recording of the machine in action you can hear in the background. This area here is the, well, it's some cottages here and some stables around here. Now these were mm -hmm. used um, for offices for code breaking, but obviously they were originally here as part of the mansion itself and the grounds for the mansion. So they just repurposed these buildings when Bletchley first opened before they uh, constructed all of the huts that we've just seen down there. Okay. Nice. We're at the back of the mansion itself, and there's some garages here with huh. various different types of transportation that we're going to look at. There's everything here. It's a very there nice is. car, though, isn't it? I like the tyres. Mm -hmm. White walls. Oh, nice. This was a motorcycle nice. like the ones that the uh, dispatch riders would have used, so they would. Okay come with the top secret messages on their motorcycles and then bring them to the code breakers here at Bletchley. The hilarious thing, oh, my hat's a bit twisted there. The hilarious thing about this, I don't know if it's hilarious actually, but these dispatch riders had no idea what it was that they were carrying. Mm. They didn't ask, they were told not to ask. They were supposed to have zero curiosity about what was in the be hard to do. for the destination and how important it was that it got there in one piece. There's a couple more vehicles in this oh, wow. side of the garage. There's an ambulance, I think that's like a f mini fire truck and huh. A very snazzy open top oh, that's car. that's a nice looking car. Oh, and a little bicycle over in the corner as well. <laughs> <laughs> These are the gates here that the dispatch riders would have come through. So they'd have come down this path here. Wow, what's, and what then history. they were by know. here. So the on the left-hand side there is where the garages are that we were just at. Mm -hmm. wow. The mansion house on the right. It's worth noting that, like quite a lot of places are doing now, Bletchley is doing a ticket where when you buy a day ticket, it actually lasts for a full year. So you can come back. So if you say, come and you can only spend a couple of hours here for whatever mm. reason, you can come back within the year and you don't have to pay any. And we've learned that with Beamish, uh, yes. I think Black Country Museum too. We don't do that here. No, we don't, no, but it's don't. an amazing concept to allow you to come back for that entire year. If, if we did it here, it'd be like $5,000 for your ticket. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's awesome and, it, and definitely glad to know that's here as well. Uh -huh. Didn't expect that here though. I just no, didn't. I sure didn't. Any extra, which I think is really, really good actually. I think it's a really good right. idea. Yeah, yeah really yeah. good idea. We actually <clears throat> used a two for one voucher but it still enabled us to both have the the year pass. So just because you have a two for one voucher, oh, don't wow. think that only one of you gets the annual pass, you both still get it anyway. So even better, really. Also, this bit of hat, I mean, I don't know what's <laughs> going on with it, but if it's been showing up in all of my videos, I wish I was better at video editing and I could like Photoshop it out because I feel that this, it's gonna really bug me when I'm video editing this oh. now. Why is this here? It's like a little antenna or something. <laughs> I love her. Oh my goodness. Bless you. That was the loudest piece. It echoed across the whole of Bletchley. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
just sort of a, a oh, view so across. Cute. So you've got the mansion in the wow. background. You can see there's picnic benches. They've got deck chairs set up as well. And then there in the background are the huts. To the right here, we've got the lake. Okay, this helps. And then, put in more perspective. if you go mm -hmm. down this path here and take a right, it leads you back to the visitor centre, which is where we're heading to now. Got it. This is the gift shop here, which we're going to come back to, but we are in need of a cup of tea, so we're going to head down to the coffee shop up here. Okay, we've had a cup of tea, and now we're going to go into two exhibitions that we actually didn't know were here. There's one on code breaking during World War One, so kind of like the road to Bletchley as we know it, wow. and the one behind there is about cybersecurity, so about almost oh. code breaking in the modern era, if you will. Yeah. This guy, Dilly Knox, was known for working in the bath, so he did his code breaking from the bath, and he was actually doing code breaking during World War One and here at Bletchley <coughs> during World War Two as well. That's amazing. Okay. What a cool dude. This is the Secrecy and Security Exhibition on Cybersecurity. Oh, I know there's just been opening mm, some of the boxes yeah. there. Anything interesting in these? No. no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> No one should, but they do. Mm -hmm. What? Poodles. Did you say poodles? <laughs> Random. That didn't sound like you, that sounded really deep. <laughs> That's the idea. <laughs> I think mom has a secret job. Funny. She's at, I, yeah, she might be a secret agent. You she never might be know. a double agent, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Change her voice. I think her name is secretly M. Mm. <laughs> Top tips for you there, guys. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. HBT. Yeah, but it's not long enough. No. It has to have numbers. It yes. Have, and uh, symbols a lot of the time yeah. as well. Look, there's a Bletchley Park Cluedo. That looks cool. Let's have a look at it. Oh, no. Oh, I'm going to... Oh, you guys call it Pluto. We call it Pluto. Yeah. I forgot about that. <clears throat> oh, that looks really cool. That is I actually like really neat. Mm -hmm. I, I would really play like that. This wartime style. I like that they still produce these kinds of things. Oh, oh wow, that's huge. That Oxo. Is it a mug or is it a measuring jug? It's a measuring jug. Oh, it's a measuring okay. jug. Oh, that's really cool. That's nice. Yeah. What else have we got? A flower. Oh, and the measuring jug over there, Thai food tea as well. If you want confectionery themed around Bletchley Park, this is the place to get it. You've got mint imperials, chocolate chip cookies, plotted hey, cream fudge, chip. You've got everything. Some stem ginger biscuits, some mints, all kinds of things. Oh, what's that? Lemon curd. Oh, lemon curd. Very nice. Really good selection of books here in the shop if you're interested in doing some more reading after you've left. Yeah. Learning a bit more about it all. I would actually. There's mm -hmm. Bletchley Park. Hoodies, oh, that's cool. I oh, I like the top. Go back for a minute. There's. I want that hoodie. Look at that. It's all that like decoded nice. and says Bletchley Park in there. Code that breakers. The code breakers. Home of the code breakers. This that's is, neat. It is. This is uh, so cool to see all this stuff. I know. That's just really cool. That's the neat, one of the coolest hoodies I've seen. Bletchley Park hoodies, caps. Oh, I like the tie. The tie is really fun. Oh, all the code on it. Hurt my eyes. T-shirts, umbrella, magnet. It's worth noting as well that the National Museum of Computing is here at Bletchley Park, but oh. it is completely separate to an entrance fee to Bletchley. It's got the original Colossus machine, or one of them, here. We gotta go. Um, I think it's an too. extra seven pound yes. fifty per person. Okay. Um, so we will not be visiting that on this particular not occasion. Today. No. Today. Might do on another occasion. Yeah. Two days. I think it'll be interesting to see, again? but not today. Right, we are heading out of Bletchley Park for the day. We've been here for what? Four or five hours? Uh, six hours. Oh, wow. six hours. So <laughs> Time yeah, it's a full day. If you're coming, yes. make sure you give yourself a whole day because Deal. there is a lot to see, yep. a lot to do. Yep. Really, really interesting stuff. I still can't quite get my head around all of it, to be yep. honest with you. Yep. Some of it's yep. just really, really hard to comprehend, mm. but yeah. well worth a visit. If you have even a slight interest in history of really? any kind, yeah. if you're interested in computers, anything like that, mm -hmm. I would thoroughly, thoroughly recommend a visit here to Bletchley Park. Really, really interesting day Thank out, you. definitely. Yeah, especially with the um, 
coming back within the yes. 12 months. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for watching this video. And thank you for that video. That was very important. No, just leave it. It's you. fine. It'll come out on its own. <laughs> thank you, Emma, so much. Uh, Emma's who, of course, did the video just now. And um, again, that's our second one we watched from her. And please, I'm asking nicely, go subscribe to her channel, mm -hmm. guys, because she second video we watched, like I said, and she really gives the details. She, she shows sure a lot. Um, she really did just a great job in the Beamish. Um, and mm -hmm. everyone really liked that video too, but this was great. It showed a lot, I felt. Um, I'm sure, again, like Debbie said earlier, so much more to see, but I don't want to see everything either, you no, know? No, because then it wouldn't, there'd be no reason to go if she showed everything in the video. Well, I still want to put my feet in, in, in the same place. You know, you know, even when she was showing where they would come in with the messages on the bike, mm -hmm. the, the, the motorbikes, and looking down that, that kind of alleyway, yeah. I'm just thinking, wow. I was putting myself in there and it was like, you know, kind of exactly. like a, a rainy afternoon or something and they're mm -hmm. driving through there and it's like, we have this message, we don't know what it is, but it can be a life saving right. for the entire world. Who knows? You know, mm -hmm. no big deal. It's crazy. It's it just is. mind boggling. And I'm so thankful that, you know, this place is still there. It's up kept really nicely. It is. And it's so much bigger than what I thought it yeah, was going to be. I, th I guess I was thinking it'd be a, a much smaller and... Mm -hmm. Basically, just some offices and maybe some rooms to sleep in. But this is way more than I thought it was going to be. And I can't wait to go there and actually stand in front of that timeline yeah. and read yep. everything that was going on. And I would do the audio um, yes, companion, the essentially. Audio tour, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, li I like those because you can learn so much more from that than just looking around at stuff, exactly. get extra information. But if you guys like this, please smash that like button. Like, just don't break it though. Um, <laughs> and consider subscribing to the channel. Um, we really do love learning stuff like this. This was great. Um, just really, it's just so neat to see again, the things in, that, that you can't wrap your mind around what they, what they did, you know, yeah. you can't, but it's so amazing to see that. Like you've been showing the living mm -hmm. quarters, like you said, all of it. It's just so cool. And we can't wait to come there ourselves and stand in the same places yes. with our own eyes and see these things. I'm super excited. I'm sure many of you here have been. Drop us a line in the comments. Let us know if you did and what and your what, thoughts were. What oh, your favorite yeah. part was. Ooh, yeah. What we definitely shouldn't miss. If there would be really helpful too, if you could let us know in this area, other things for us to go visit, even within a couple hours drive, because mm -hmm. we wanted like, yep. to take our vacation to the max and do as much as we can, but preferably in the same area so we can yep. knock out some stuff. Yep. Go to one area and get it all. Yeah. Get it all taken care of. Where's the best place for food, like fish and chips? Mm. Huh? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed that too. And, um, you know, just love learning stuff like this. And we'll continue to. So until next time, please love like jazz. Be as strong as Tyson. Bye, guys. Bye.